boys upstairs beds are an absolute pain to make because either you have to crawl into the bunk space to fit the sheets or to pull the foam mattresses out which sit on top of the sprung slats. You have to pull them towards you while simultaneously balancing on the wrong way on the ladder. Or if you can't simultaneously fight with a foam mattress while balancing on a ladder and holding a load of sheet straps in the other hand, you need to bring each mattress downstairs and use lots of sheet straps on normal 90 centimeter width single sheets. If you don't want to shell out for specialist 75 centimeter or small single ones, of which there's obviously far less choice. So not only that, but also at least one of them is forever getting in a pickle, losing their duvet and so on. So we need something a bit like a duvelet because that could simply be rolled out rather than having to fight with a sheet and a foam mattress. However, duvelets don't come as wide as the boys' beds need and the duvet is attached along the side which isn't a practical solution for our needs. So I've made a design that will work better for us and so the sewing machine is out again. And before I show you how I made it, here's the finished article. It's a 25 centimeter or 1 inch memory foam topper inside a Coolmax cover. The cover, the cover itself makes fitting much easier and that's all encased in a sheet cover. And I've made it a two side sheet cover. I've used a nice dense Egyptian cotton sheet on one side for summer and a cosy brush cotton on the other side for winter. I know we've got heating and ventilation in the roof bed but if you're going to go to the trouble to purpose build something you might as well make it as good as possible. And here at the base a full size normal duvet is clipped on so that the boys can kick their duvet down to the bottom of the bed if they're too hot or easily find it in the middle of the night and pull it up over themselves flat if they're too cold. I'm lucky enough to own a plastic snap poppers press so all the fixings are these really cool colourful plastic poppers. Anyway, uh, that's what the finished article is going to look like so here's how I made it. These are the materials I'm using for each bed roll. A brush cotton sheet, an Egyptian cotton sheet, and an Egyptian cotton duvet cover and a two and a half centimeter memory foam topper in a Coolmax cover. I'm going to have the Coolmax side under the Egyptian cotton side of the sheet and then an electric under blanket between the cheap fabric underside of the topper and the brushed cotton side of the bottom sheet. But first to unpack everything and let the topper uncompress. <laughs> Step one is of course measuring up. Our van has quite a temperature differential between upstairs and downstairs because the downstairs is so well insulated and also each boy prefers a different sleeping temperature so I'm leaving enough space to integrate an electric under blanket into the winter side of each bottom sheet. I'm using normal off the shelf sheets because I picked these up to try and use as intended and also because as these were on sale at our local department store they cost far less than I would have paid for the equivalent fabric by the meter anyway and they were available in great colours. A little bit more work is involved though as these are fitted sheets so the elastic must be removed before the fabric can be ironed flat and properly marked and measured out. The next step is to pin the edges and sew the three sides together leaving a gap for the electric under blanket lead. Rather than relying on the measurements I actually stitched up two sides and then inserted the memory foam topper and used that as a guide to pin the third side into place thus ensuring that the sheet envelope was just snug enough but not too tight. Because the top is very thin at only two and a half centimeters I, I can get away with making a 2D envelope rather than a 3D box cushion like cover. If the corner is a little bit saggy later I'll turn the whole thing inside out and then sew over these diagonally to give the whole thing a bit more of a 3D form. Then I trim the excess off the seams and hem the bottom opening on both sides. Next step is to tidy up the opening that I've left in the side seam for the electric blanket connector as that needs to be at the pillow end. Then it's test fit time. The next stage is really simple because I'm using a full width single duvet cover so no adjustment is needed. Again I've gone for a lovely smooth Egyptian cotton cover in a dark grey with a hint of white piping around the side seams for interest. So this is just a matter of inserting colourful snap poppers into the bottom opening. Firstly to keep the topper in place and secondly to attach the duvet cover. The snap poppers have an optimal fabric thickness and these sheets are a little on the thin side so I'm also inserting some little squares of thin webbing to make up the thickness. 
Then, having finished one, it's a case of doing it all over again, this time a bit quicker, as of course I've learnt all the tricks like stretching the fitted parts of the sheet over the table end to make life easier. On the second one though I've made it a tad wider and I'm adding some extra poppers down both of the sides because one of my sons is very young but also has a medical condition that means his sheets quite often need changing in the middle of the night. I've put the poppers down the sides so that I can fit some extra layers of waterproof liners and top sheets and make this changing job really easy. The final job is to make some pipe and elastic straps, variation on a Dan Trudgeon idea, uh, both to keep the bed rolls rolled and also to use as handy carrying handles. For these I'm using a 40cm length of black tubular trunking and some 5mm black super strong cord elastic. I've drilled a hole in each end of the trunking, so just wide enough to take the 5mm elastic and then it's a simple matter of passing the elastic through the hole and out the end of the tube, tying a huge knot but just small enough so that it goes back into the trunking so that the elastic stays in place and then pulling it back into the tube to tidy everything up. Then double checking how long the elastic needs to be. Long enough that uh, it's not too difficult to get the bed rolls done up obviously but not too long that it's saggy and so the handle proves useless. Then the same procedure as before, elastic through the hole that's been drilled in the tube and out of the natural end, tie a number of really secure large knots and then pull it back through to tidy it all up. And hey presto, we're done. Thanks for joining us, please subscribe to follow more of our adventures and we'll see you in the next one.